Hi everybody, I just want to let you know a little bit about myself. Um, I definitely know about arthritis. Um, I've been experiencing it for a little over 20 years. I had a massive injury. A little story about myself, I had three back surgeries and three knee surgeries. Um, this is what's in my back. I still have one set in. <clears throat> they finally had to take one set out because it was giving me some problems. I have titanium screws and plates. This is the titanium screws that came out of my right femur. Um, I got a big chunk of uh, cartilage in my knee, about that big around. It's missing. So, trust me, I get it. I, I know what pain is. I know as much as you guys do, probably more. And some of you may even know more than me. If, if you do, I feel sorry for you. Listen, how do we deal with these things? How does the doctor deal with it? Surgeries, and then what? Medications. What do medications do for us? Can medications solve uh, arthritis? No, they can't. The, the medical industry to this day hasn't been able to solve arthritis. Now, here is just a kind of a snapshot here of what's going on with all the medications that I was on. I haven't taken any of these since June, about mid-June. Um, so, you know, that's a pretty good mix. <clears throat> I'm going to show you a list of everything that I was on. I hope you guys can see this because I can't tell. But um, basically, this is what you take. For pain and for muscle relaxing, this is what you take in the beginning. Now, I took this for almost 20 years, and what happens when you take it so long, it eats away at your stomach. Now, um, I woke up one morning and I started puking blood, and it wound up that I had a, an ulcer, a bleeding ulcer created from this stuff. Now, then I had to go to another doctor, and he gave me this stuff. <laughs> Funny, huh? Then, basically, I got that kind of under control, <clears throat> but then I couldn't sleep anymore. So then I started having problems with insomnia. So I went to the doctor and he gave me this stuff. Doctors are great, right? They got a pill for everything. And I'm not being hard on doctors, really. They do the best they can with what they have to work with. Now, I had those injuries, and so I obviously I couldn't work physically. So what did I do? I went and got a desk job. Now, here's the last thing. It's funny, huh? And I want you guys to look at this. This is the x-rays of my hands. <clears throat> this is this thumb. The cartilage is worn down. So I have massive problems here. I have problems with my wrist. I have a lot of problems in, in this area due to the tendons. Why? I overworked them all. Why? Check this out, a mouse. All of you guys that have worked at home or using computers, you know what I'm talking about. Now, you want to hear the funny thing is, I'm the kind of guy that just keeps on going. You know, like a lot of you people are. I got myself a special mouse, you know. Hey, this one don't work, well, these work, so let's just keep going. You know, I can probably get another two or three years out of that arm. Thing is, what do you do? So, you keep taking these. I don't know, there's an end to it all. Now, I forgot something. You gotta have the pink stuff, you know? How many times do you wake up in the middle of the night with that heartburn and it's running up in your throat and you can't take it anymore? You gotta have the pink stuff. So, what's the solution, guys? It's definitely not this. It's not this. I got lucky. I got turned on to this. It's called Provalin. It worked for me. How did I take it? I'm going to tell you right now. I took a tablet in the morning, one at midday, one at night. I took it for five days. Three tabs, five days. I got 80% reduction in pain. 80% guys. None of this. I'm not on this. I wasn't on it. With this product right here, I got an 80% reduction in my pain. It took me about 10 days longer and I got off uh, the other 10%. So I'm running about 95% pain free. It's wonderful. This stuff is natural. It's not going to hurt you. You're not going to have to have a liver transplant and you probably won't get that bleeding ulcer like I did. Now, we all know on anti-inflammatories they're going to get you. This won't get you. It's a, I think they said it was made out of some sort of fungus. Um, you know like penicillin? Well, hey, if a fungus works, it works. So trust me. It The Fruit Commission of Washington State, our largest cherry producer, can fund reviews cherry-picking studies on the anti-inflammatory effects of cherries in a petri dish and animal models. But what we need are human studies. For example, if you stuff the human equivalent of a, up to 1,000 cups of cherries down the throats of rats, it appears to have an anti-inflammatory effect, but we couldn't eat that many. And In fact, if we tried, it could end up badly. This is a case report of a poor guy who ate 500 cherries whole without spitting out the pits, which ended up fatally obstructing his colon. But we didn't have many human studies until now. Men and women 
were asked to eat about 45 cherries a day for a month. I wouldn't mind being part of that study. 25% drop in C-reactive protein levels, as well as an inflammatory protein with an inelegant acronym regulated on and activation normal T-cell expressed and secreted. That's actually the name. Um, as you can see, even a month after the study ended, there appeared to be residual anti-inflammatory benefit from the cherry fest. Now, these were all healthy people with low levels of inflammation to begin with, but the same was found in a follow-up study on folks with higher levels, a solid 20% drop in C-reactive protein, and a number of other markers for chronic inflammatory diseases. But how about trying out cherries on people who actually have a chronic inflammatory disease to see if they actually work? Well, back in 1950, in an obscure Texas medical journal, observations made by responsible physicians suggested that in a dozen patients with gout, eating half a pound of fresh or canned cherries helped prevent flares of gout, but it had never been seriously tested until now. Gout is an excruciatingly painful inflammatory arthritis caused by the crystallization of uric acid in our joints, affecting 8 million Americans. Uh, such attacks cause tremendous pain, uh, as famously captured in this caricature. Hundreds of gout sufferers studied, and cherry intake was associated with a 35% lower risk of gout attacks. With over half the risk gone at three servings, measured over a two-day period, which comes out to be about 16 cherries a day, uh, that's the kind of efficacy they saw with a low purine diet. Uh, uric acid is a breakdown product of purines. The same research group found that purine intake of animal origin increased the odds for recurrent gout attacks by nearly fivefold. Heavy alcohol consumption isn't a good idea either. Now, there are some high purine non animal foods, like uh, mushrooms and asparagus, but they found no significant link to plant sources of purines. So they recommended eliminating meat and seafood from the diet. Uh, that may decrease risk, and adding cherries on top may decrease risk of gout attacks even further. Same thing with the leading drug. Allopurinol works, but pills and produce appear to work even better. And dietary changes in cherries may be all many patients have, as doctors are hesitant to prescribe uric acid-lowering drugs like allopurinol due to rare but serious side effects, including the most feared of all drug side effects, Stevens-Johnson syndrome, which can detach our skin from our body. I will spare you the photos. In addition to fighting inflammation, cherries may actually help lower uric acid levels as well. Uh, within five hours of eating a big bowl of cherries, uric acid levels in the blood significantly drop. At the same time, antioxidant levels in the blood go up as vitamin C levels start to rise. Uh, so is it just an antioxidant effect? I mean, would other fruit work just as well? No. They tried grapes, strawberries, and kiwi fruit, and none significantly lowered uric acid levels, supporting a specific anti-gout effect of cherries. There are some new gout drugs out now, costing up to $2,000 per dose and also carries a risk of toxicity that may be avoided by using non-pharmacological treatments or prevention in the first place. Given the potential harms and high costs, attention ought to be directed to dietary modification, reducing alcohol and meat intake, particularly sardines and organ meats. And hey, if life serves up a bowl of cherries consumed on a regular basis, the risk of a recurrent gout attack may be meaningfully reduced.